What's up, you guys? It's Kim Vaughn, aka Coach He, coming back to you with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and also tap the bell so that you are notified of every new video that I post. So as you guys can tell by the title of this video, I am here to do the April mock budget video. And I am doing it in a printed out colored version of my income allocation budget workbook. I know y'all have been waiting for that walkthrough. And guess what? I just finished recording it, so it is coming up next. Okay, so I have chosen the person to do the mock budget for and basically I asked my dad to choose a number between such and such and such and such and I did it in order in which they came through my email and that's the person that I chose. Now I did kind of work through the numbers a little bit like over the weekend I think. Maybe it was Friday, and I have not looked at the numbers since then, and honestly, the way that my brain works, I don't remember nothing. So <laughs> I'm just going to do this as if it was my budget, and I'm going to use the income allocation method, and we're just going to go from there. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the monthly layout sheet. I'm going to go ahead and write in the dates, and then I'm going to also write her bills in, and then we're going to kind of go from there. Okay, so this is pretty much brand new to me, y'all, because I can't remember anything. <laughs> So I'm going to write all of her debt bills in red just so I can kind of distinguish between them all. Okay y'all, so I was trying to figure out what day her cell phone was due and I, I'm looking through the emails now and I asked her a couple of times. And I don't think she ever told me the date. Oh, I wish that I had the exact day. Crap. Okay, yeah, so I can't find what day the cell phone is due. So I'm going to put it for here and hope that it's due this day. And if it's not, what she can do is just pay the cell phone bill early. Because she does know the exact amount. So I'm going to put it here because it seems like this paycheck is a little heavy a little bit. So let's put it there. And if you're watching this video, which you should be because I told you when it was coming out, I would say go ahead and pay your cell phone at some point between the 10th and the 18th so that the numbers kind of work out the same. So that's that. Now, what I can say is she has two children. She does have a spouse, but all of these numbers are based on her income only. And the way that she explained it, she said there's two adults and two children for the variable expenses because her spouse does take care of anything that she can't afford herself. Um, but I am going to do the rent based on $400 because her rent is $830, but the, the amount that she always pays is $400. So the, I, don't, I didn't want to work everything based on $830 because, first of all, it's going to take away from how much she will actually have for savings and debt and everything, but also because it's not realistic because she doesn't pay $830, she pays $400. All of the other numbers are going to be based on just her income, and it's going to help out because if there's anything that her spouse helps her with, it's going to take away from from you know money that she has to spend which gives her more money for savings and debt so we're gonna we're gonna work based off of this so let's go ahead and go to the next page here and all I'm gonna do I'm gonna first transfer all of this information to this side over here alone and then we'll start working on the right side but for now let me fill this part out okay so I wrote everything out a um, couple things to note she gave me Entergy is 7728. I'm not familiar with it, but I believe that it's like a utilities company. She gave me that her light bill is 130. So I'm going to assume that this is gas. <laughs> Sorry if I assumed wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's correct. And then um, for internet, she has internet, cable, and a house phone, which 
she explained that she needs a landline for her PRN job and for her son to be able to call her once he gets home from school and she can't find a company that just has phone and internet right now. Honestly, when you have things bundled like that, that's about what you're gonna pay because if you take away cable, it's probably gonna be like $20 less, which $20 saved is $20 earned. It's $20 you could put towards savings or debt, but you know, it kind of is what it is with that. As far as her car insurance, she said that she has full coverage for her work and side jobs. Um, she is living in a house. She's renting a house. And so her renter's insurance, of course, was a lot less when she was in an apartment. And, oh, you know what? As far as this one right here, we don't have to include this Discover bill because she made an extra payment. So this is actually paid for this month. And typically I would say to still pay the minimum, but really you don't need to um, because it's already taken care of. So we're actually going to utilize that extra $52 for something else. And that is it there. So let's go ahead and first add up what the fixed expenses are. And then we're going to move on to start the whole allocation process. And really, I could have put Hulu up there with the cable instead of using another line, but she had enough lines, so she was okay. So, total fixed expenses is $2,140.31. So, that's that. All right. Now, let's go ahead and move in over to this side. So, her projected income, she has a payday on the 4th and 18th. I just put this down here so I could kind of see what she had, like what expenses she has until her next payday. And then she does have this extra income coming in on the 10th. And so, we are going to include that as well. So, what she said was for... The April 4th paycheck is going to be, and I'm going to actually write it in here. So it's going to be $1,042.73. This one is $1,050. And then this one is the same $1,042.73. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate that. $1,042.73 times 2 plus the $1,050. So that means that our projected income is going to be $3,135.46. So if we subtract our fixed expenses, 214031, we have a net income of 995.15. Oh, actually, you know what? I lied. I forgot we need to subtract that $52. Because that's already taken care of. So this is what the actual is going to end up being. And I'm going to, let's go ahead and keep it there. But then we're going to subtract the 52 for Discover. So that's going to give us Uh oh. So thirty one thirty five forty six minus twenty eighty eight thirty one. So we have one thousand forty seven dollars and fifteen cents left over. So let's go ahead and do the variable expenses here. So the numbers that she gave me, she has three fifty per month for groceries. Gas is 120 per month. And then she has written down kids medical copay as $10. So, let's go ahead and add that up. 350 120 and 10 Okay, so now the next step that we have to do, we have to figure out how much money from our net income 
needs to be set off to the side for our everyday expenses, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the 480 that we have budgeted for our everyday expenses down here, and we're gonna divide it by the net income of 1047.15. That gives me 45.8%. And when you are still in debt, I always recommend that you round up to the nearest 10. So that's going to give us 50%. And that just makes it easy for you to separate the savings and debt portion. And it also gives you some extra money just in case you overspend because she doesn't have some of the like personal household. I know some people put personal household inside of groceries because they kind of get it all at one time when they're at the grocery store. She doesn't have anything for shopping, miscellaneous, whatever. So this will actually help out quite a bit. So let's go ahead and divide that in half and we get 523.57. But I'm actually going, yeah, I am going to do 57. Because I have to make sure when I subtract this from that, that I get an even number so it's easy to divide on the next page. So we got 50% there, and I'm actually going to do the paycheck to paycheck breakdown for you guys just so y'all can see how that works. Okay, so that means we need to do 25 to savings and 25% towards debt. Now, if you guys have not noticed by now, I am a big saver and I feel like saving is very important, especially when you have kids and you're doing like saving is just important because you never know what's going to happen these days. Okay, and the other thing is as she starts to get rid of some of these other debts, right? Because we do this based on our fixed expense amount. So when she pays off some of these debts, there's less amount that she has for fixed expenses, which means we're going to have more of a net income and more that we can allocate towards savings and debt. As that starts to happen and you get to the point where your extra debt payments is $500, you're not going to like putting $500 towards your debt and feeling like you're still broke because you only got $1,000 in savings or only $500 in savings. So when you're able to make a $500 extra debt payment and save $500 at the same time, trust me, it makes everything so much different, like so much different. Okay, so let's take the 1047.15. That is our net income over here. We're going to subtract this 523, tongue tied 523.57. And then we're going to divide that by two because what we have left over just needs to be divided in half here. So that means that 261.79 will be going to savings this month at least. And then we have 261.79 that's going to be our extra debt payment. Okay. Now, to double check your math, because when you're first starting out, you want to make sure everything is correct. If you add what's in these three boxes, you get what should be your net income. Okay? And of course, if you add this plus that, you got your income. So, let's move on. So I know some people had questions like, oh, what if your very first allocation, you don't earn enough to cover your bills? What do you do? Let me show you because... When I did my April budget, mine did. So, you know, it was a little bit confusing for some people. So we're going to write in our threshold is $2,088.31. Now, I want y'all to pay very close attention to this. And I'm wondering, should I do the... Y'all want to see me? No, we're going to do this first. Because I'm going to do it the way that I do on my YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and do the paycheck to paycheck overview. Then I'm going to do the weekly allocation so you guys can understand how the allocations work. Why you don't put, you know, whatever's left over. Can I put more of that towards debt? No, you cannot. And I'm going to explain why. Okay? So let's do this part first. So this is somebody who gets paid every other week. But she also has the extra payday in there. So I'm pretty sure she'll want to take her budget from paycheck to paycheck, which is absolutely fine. You don't have to do it on a weekly basis. So I'm going to use her as an example and do this as if I was the typical person, not like myself, who just wants to do everything on a weekly basis. So our first paycheck is April 4th. And that's going to be for $1,042.73. Now, we have a for sure payday in the middle of these two, so this is going to be paycheck two. So we have April 10th, income is $1,050. Payday two, 
paycheck three is April 18th, $1,042.73. And remember, this is what we do before we actually get paid, so we kind of know how everything is going to work out. So I'm just going to go ahead and write all of the bills in each part, and I do need to calculate what we need to put as far as the budget goes, I don't know what day her kid's medical copay is. And typically I would separate that out. Um, she said that her gas, she could typically like stretch out for three weeks. But I'm going to do the 350 and the one. You know what? I'm not going to separate out the $10 because I don't know what day that's for. So let's just do the 480 divided by... Ooh, let's see. One, two, three, four. So, ooh, it's 28 days in the month. So let's do divided by 28. That gives me about $17.14 per day. So paycheck one is going to be, let me see, 17, 14. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six days in paycheck one. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight days in paycheck two. And 14 in paycheck three. So let's do the 17, 14 times the six days. So that means in paycheck one, our budgeted expenses are going to be about $102.84. Paycheck two, and this is why I do stuff on a weekly basis, y'all, but you ain't heard it from me. But I want this to be pretty accurate because if she kind of goes grocery shopping once in between paydays, this is kind of how to end up working out. Okay, so let's take the 480, we're going to subtract the 102.84, and then we're going to subtract the 137.12. So that means paycheck 3 is going to be 240.04 that she'll have for those expenses. So let me write that in first. So paycheck 1 is 102.84. Paycheck 2 is 137.12. Paycheck three is 240.04. And again, it's only a difference because of how many days she has in between paychecks. Now, if this paycheck wasn't in here, I would just divide the 480 by two and it would just be 240 and 240 and you would keep it moving. But she has that extra one in there. So at this point, let me just write out all of her bills. I'm going to do the subtracting. All that's going to be sped up. And then we're going to go to the weekly allocation page because that's the page that most people kind of have a little bit of trouble with. Okay, so I have done the pre-plan. So from paycheck one, she still has 540 pretty much left over. Paycheck two, she has 250 left over. And then paycheck three, she is negative 218. She did tell me a lot of her bills used to come out on the first and she's changed things around so that she can avoid late fees and everything. Even though she is negative this week, what she can do if she wants to really, really reconcile and make sure she doesn't have any negative weeks, what she can do is she can take something from here and instead pay it early in paycheck one, but she would need to take about $200 worth of things. So what she like, let's say she wanted to pay her internet cable and phone bill early, she can do that. She can pay her one of her credit card bills early. It really just kind of depends. To be honest with you, the best 
thing about this is that she's negative at the end of the month, which means that if she does what she's supposed to do these first two paychecks, the last paycheck being negative won't hurt her as much because you can see she has this money that's left over. Okay, so let's go here. So if I were you, I would probably reconcile out a little bit. But again, you don't necessarily have to because it is, it is your last paycheck that's like that. So again, we got $539.89. We got $255.83. And then we have $218.57. Nothing here, nothing there. Okay, so 539.89 plus 255.83 minus 218.57. So we have 577.15 left over, which you guys know that we needed 523.58 for our savings and debt allocation. So just really quickly, the reason why this number looks different from what we have left over here because remember this th these numbers take into account the budget here which is our groceries and stuff like that right so that means that what's left over typically when you guys see me do my budget i break this down into what i would put towards savings like i would break down this goes to singing funds whatever but she's still in debt so it's a little bit different i'm really excited about this so if we take away the 261.79 that we already know should be in savings by the time this is all over with and we take away the 261.79 that should already be put towards extra debt payments what we have left over should just be a couple of dollars and the number is different because we've given ourselves this extra what is that about 43 dollars of cushion between what we actually need for our budgeted expenses and what we gave ourselves that extra like 5%, I think it was, for the checking allocation. So if we subtract that, that gives us an excess of $53.57. Oh, wait, did I mess something up? I think I have a number that's off right now. Okay, so I figured out where my error was. If you take whatever you have left over, so the leftover per paycheck, you subtract what you've already kind of said that you want to put towards savings, what you already said that you want to put towards debt, which you have on these two sheets. When you add this with the budgeted expenses, excuse me, a 480, you should get whatever you have in your checking allocation, okay? And as you guys can see, I'm off by $10. Where that $10 is, is I just looked through the playback of when I recorded this. Um, this should be $400, but when I actually calculated, I accidentally put $410 in. Our total fixed expenses or her total fixed expenses is $2,078 and not $88. So that's going to change our numbers just a tad. Not by much, but it's okay. This is, again, why I have so many different ways for you to double check yourself. 207831. So that means we have $10 extra in our net income. But this part shouldn't actually change. So if we take the 480 divided by 1057.15, we still need to do 50%. So 0.5 times the 1057 15 is 528.57. So that's going to change this number just a tad. So 64.29. So when we go back here, if we do 64.29, that means what we actually have left over is 48.57. So if we add that plus the 480, 
we get the 52857 that we should have. So as far as what she should do with this extra, honestly, I would just keep it in the checking account as a cushion. And then if you underspend, then you have even more of a cushion. And I would continue to let your cushion accumulate until you have two to three times your, I would say two times, two times your monthly expenses in your checking account as your base. So when you guys see me do a $4,000 base from month to month, that is my two times talent two times my monthly expenses. Now you guys know that this month my fixed expenses are only $200 a month. No, I'm not going to have a $400 buffer. I'm going to keep my 4,000 and we're going to keep it moving <laughs> because at some point I'm going to have my, you know, rent and utilities and stuff like that back. So let's go ahead and do the weekly allocations, which I kind of recorded already, but you know, I got to kind of do it over because it, it wasn't the right numbers. So the threshold is actually $2,078.31. Okay. So let me take this paper out from when I recorded it the first time. <laughs> so again, the allocation percentages for this month, 50, 25, 25. Now paycheck one's income is $1,042.73. This is the one she had on the 4th. This will be 410 and this will be 418. So the question we have to ask ourselves, did we earn enough money to cover our fixed expenses? No, we haven't. So it's not time to start allocating yet. That means we have to keep everything in our checking. Now, as the month goes on, you're going to pay your bills the same exact way you always do. You're still going to spend whatever you spend on groceries on a weekly basis. All that's okay. Because even though we haven't earned enough, guess what? We have another paycheck coming, right? And so remember, the way that I budget is on a cumulative basis. I don't just go from paycheck to paycheck and this is why I do monthly overviews before I do the actuals and everything and this is exactly why so we're still going to pay everything like we typically do and you guys know from me just doing this pre-plan we're going to have quite a bit of money extra left over before we hit paycheck two are we going to you know put some extra towards debt or extra towards saving hick to the nah because then you're going to screw yourself up come paycheck three when you're negative OK, so I did have that question on one of my I think it was my um, my personal April paycheck one, the paycheck to paycheck video for week one. Someone asked that, like, OK, so you allocated the sixty nine fifty eight to keep in your checking. What are you keeping that in your checking for? Well, because remember, our checking allocation is not just for our fixed expenses, our threshold, but it's also for variable expenses as well. Okay, so now paycheck two is $1,050. Now the question is, have we earned enough to allocate? Well, if we take the 1042.73, we add the 1050, we have now earned enough. Okay, so now it's time to start allocating. Do we allocate the whole 1050? No, we're not going to split this 50, 25, and 25 because we haven't reached our threshold yet. So, what we have to do, if we take the 20, 92, 73 that we've now earned between both of these paychecks, we had to hit this threshold first before we started allocating. So we're going to subtract. And let me make sure I get my numbers right this time. 78, 31. So we have $14.42 that we need to allocate. OK, so this is what we're going to split 50, 25 and 25. So if we split this in half, we have 721, but we need this to be an even number because this also is going to be 50 percent and we need that 50 percent to be divisible by two. So we're just going to do 720, which means that this is going to be 722. So we got 361 and 361. Do I want you to go put an extra 361 payment on your debt just yet? No. Um, if I were you, I would kind of do what I do. So my regular bank account is Bank of America and then I have Ally. So I have an Ally checking and then I have all my different like sinking funds and savings or whatever. So this one, I have, I have Zelle with both. And this is just for any of you guys watching. This sale is linked to my email account. 
or email address and this one's linked to my phone number. So what I would do, I would transfer both of these out from here to your ally checking. Okay. So once this hits your checking, you're going to put this 361 towards whatever savings that you want to put it towards. Then you keep this one in this checking. Okay. And you're going to let this accumulate. And at the end of the month, all of your money will be in there for you to make your big extra debt payment, which you have a debit card for. Or if you don't want to have a debit card for this checking account, because you got spending problems, cut that debit card up when it comes. And what you can do when it's time to make that extra debt payment, just transfer it back to your Zelle over here and make it from your regular account. So let's go ahead and put our 361. And 361. If we take the 1050 minus the 361 both times, that means that we kept $1,042.78 in our account. What does this mean? Well, we kept whatever was needed to go from here to finish off our threshold, and then it also includes this little $7.20. Okay, so now we have earned enough to hit our threshold to pay our regular expenses. Now everything that's kept in our checking from here on out, that 50%, now we're about to play catch up because we didn't only spend $7.20 on our variable expenses thus far on our gas and groceries and stuff because we have $480 for that. But we know that we've only allocated $7.20. So paycheck three is going to catch us up with that. So paycheck three is the same as paycheck one. And once you have already allocated some time this month, you know that every single dollar from here on out is allocated. So let's go back to our 1042.73. We're going to multiply that by 50%. 521.70. Is 521.38. We're going to divide that by 2 because this is 50%. So we got 260.69. And this is going to be your extra debt payment for this month or your snowball payment, whatever you want to call it. And this is how much you're going to send towards savings. So I would do the same thing. So now you're basically your total extra debt payment for this month is going to end up being 264.30. That also was how much you sent towards savings. And then let's go ahead and calculate down how much you kept in your checking. 521.35. So we kept 2606.86. Let's go ahead and add across to make sure that we came up with our income amount, which this is the total for the income. Because if you take that times two plus that, that is your income for this month. So let me show y'all why these numbers always work out, okay? Let me zoom out a little bit. So this is how much we kept in our checking for the entire month, right? We got 2606.86. Well, what was our fixed expenses? That was our threshold, right? So if we subtract what we kept in here, this is why when you do the calculations for my method, you do it based on a monthly, but then you can break everything down paycheck to paycheck. So that means this is how much we kept in our checking extra outside of our fixed expenses. How much did we have for our variable expenses? Because this is all spending money at this point. If we subtract the 480, we've given ourselves this cushion, all right? Because this is all that we kept in our checking. Remember, this, this only includes how much we allocated for checking when we actually got paid, okay? So this is why when you have extra left over or you're allocating stuff to keep into checking, you're keeping it there for a reason. You've only hit your threshold for your fixed expenses. What about your everyday expenses? So this is why when you have this extra checking out, do not change these percentages. When you come up with your percentages, when you do this, stick to it for the rest of the month. If you have underspent, 
or you've earned more money, it's okay. You've earned more money. It's just going to change your percentages to where you have more money to allocate, but don't change your percentages, whatever you do. So I hope that this made sense. If you have questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. To be honest with you, um, to whom sent your numbers in, I honestly wouldn't change a thing. Um, most of your bills are really debt bills. Like, this, 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 um, this, this, that. So most of your expenses are debt bills. Once you get your debt out of the way, you're going to have so much money left over to send towards just saving and saving. So, you know, I encourage you guys stay along the journey. It can be difficult sometimes. It can be long sometimes, but you guys can see from my own personal budget that it's worth it. You know, when you can just not have very much outside of rent and utilities, it's it's amazing what you can do with your money. It's amazing how much money you can save. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. But other than that, I will see you guys in the next video, which will be the Income Allocation Budget Workbook walkthrough. I finally got it for y'all. See y'all later. Bye.